I've been operating in discernment probably most of my life. I wasn't saved till I was 14. I was filled with the Holy Spirit when I was 16. I didn't really have a language for discernment. But when we first started our church in Florida, there was a, um, we were doing conferences um, back in the, in the early 1980s. And we had a young prophet come to America that some of you may have heard of. He was very young, just starting out in the nation. His name was Kim Clement. How many remember Kim? And he came, and it was one of the first conferences that he came to in, um, in Florida. I was, I think uh, when he came, let's see, my, my son was maybe, he was in his first year. So I was probably 25 years old, 25, 26 years old. We were pastoring a church. We had three small children. God was activating all this discernment in me. I didn't know what to think about some of the things I was seeing. Nobody talked about discernment back then. And so he, I was at this conference, and I was in the back. I had three little kids, like, hanging on me. And um, I had a three-and-a-half-year-old, a two-year-old, and a newborn. Sila, okay? And a new church, and we were birthing the prophetic movement, okay? So we were doing one conference a month. I was basically exhausted all the time, okay? But he, he, I'm in the back, and he's up ministering. And he calls me and he says, this young lady right here with all those kids, could you just, could you just come up here? And, um, and so I went up and he laid hands on me and he said, now listen, I don't know who you are. Because he had just come in, like in the middle of the service. And he said, but listen, the Lord showed me that you're called to be a watchman for this ministry. This is before anybody was really using that term. He said, God's called you to be a watchman for this ministry and a watchman in the body of Christ. And the Lord says, I, he's anointed you to see the snake and to see the wolf. And then there were some other things that he said. So about a couple months later, we had some things happen at the ministry where, without going into a lot of detail, um, we had a staff member that was basically a really um, demonically planted there, really. And she was actually Bishop Hammond's secretary. And she seemed to have all kinds of gifts. But I'm telling you, have you ever just met somebody and it's like, ooh. And she, she had a great smile. She lifted her hands in worship. She did all the right things. But every time I got around her, there was just something in me. Right? Okay. And so I never trusted her. But Bishop trusted her, okay? So it was like, well, I'm going to have to, like, learn to, you know. And listen, and so she ended up causing some division, and it's the, it's the closest thing we've ever come to a split. But way back in the beginning, she split off a couple of staff members and a couple of church families when we were just starting and, um, and then kind of led them, led them away by just spreading some really horrific lies. And so when we got together as a leadership team to kind of, like pray and, and like talk about what had happened, you know, I just, I kind of made this statement. I said, you know, well, I just, I, I just never really trusted her. And Bishop turned and looked at me and he said, well, why didn't you say something? And I said, well, my mother taught me if you can't say something nice, <laughs> then you don't say anything at all. And how many understand that discernment is no excuse to go around talking about people, Okay. But if you're talking about speaking to your spiritual leader about something, then that's a whole nother diff that's a whole nother matter. And so Bishop said, listen, you got that prophetic word that you were anointed to see the snake and to see the wolf. That's the gift of discernment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hands and I'm going to lay my hands on you and I'm going to activate that gift of discernment so that you've got permission to start activating that and telling me and the other leaders, what it is you're seeing and what it is that you're hearing. I was already seeing and hearing. I just didn't know what to do with it. And so he laid his hands on me, and he prayed. I didn't feel anything. I didn't, like, get Holy Ghost shivers or anything. I just, he prayed, he activated it. But the next day, we went to church. And I'm a people person. I love people. Um, and, and so I went to church. Oh, hi, good to see you. Oh, give them a hug. And as I'm giving them a hug... Apocalypsis happens. And all of a sudden, I'm seeing all the stuff. 
And then, like, I'm up leading worship, and I'm looking back there going, oh, Jesus, what a, oh, my gosh. I'm seeing people's thoughts. I'm seeing people's hearts. I'm seeing all this stuff. So literally, after, like, two weeks of this, I went back to Bishop, and I said, you put your hands back on me, and you take this back, okay? I do not want this. This is awful. What an awful, awful thing, okay? Please make this stop. And you know what he said? He said, no. He said, you're going to learn to operate. This is a gift of the Holy Spirit. I said, it sure doesn't feel like a gift. It feels like a curse. Come on, how how many people are are relating to this, okay? And it's literally like God had to take me through a process of learning to operate in this gift. And it was not pleasant for pretty much for anybody because I would see things and I would, they just said, just come and share with us. My, my bishop and my husband, two of the most mercy motivated, kind hearted people that you'll ever meet. Never think a negative thought about people. And when I first started discerning, that's all I was doing. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> Okay, and I would go and I'd say, well, this person has this issue in their life, and this person has this issue, and this person has this issue. What are you going to do about it? And they'd be like, okay, well, we're going to pray. How many are grateful that mercy triumphs over judgment? You know, before you judge somebody's problem, you need to understand there's always a process with God. How many are glad that God didn't just put a giant X through your name when you were not doing good? Come on, how many are glad that God gave you a second chance? How many are glad that God didn't just let you be kicked out of a process when God was trying to draw you back to him when you weren't doing so well? Come on, so sometimes discernment is not the end of the matter. Sometimes we got to see what we're seeing, but then also hear the heart of God and the process for the person to bring redemption because ultimately that's what the gift is for. Listen, I have, I have people that are leaders in my church today that I discerned all kinds of very unrighteous things operating in their life when they first come to, came to us. We deal with sin, but we love the person, and we walk with them until they come to a place of freedom. That's the heart of Christ, amen? I'm really super glad my leaders did that with me. Okay? However... Sometimes there's wolves. Let me give you a good example of a wolf. Um, I was on the worship team. I was was worshiping the Lord one night, and this man walked in the back door of our church. We were packed out that night. He walked in. He sat on second to last row, put his hands in the air, started worshiping. He was dressed light nicely. He was a nice-looking man. He was lifting his hands and worshiping God, seemed to be entering into the spirit. The second that he walked in, I wanted to go back there and punch him in the face. (laughs) Just those that are excited about punching, please don't ever please go punch anybody in the face, okay? Please don't ever do that, okay? But I'm just telling you, there was this anger that rose up in me for no explainable reason. When there is no reason, it's because there's a reason. Okay, we'll talk about a couple of those reasons, but let me just say this, because the reason could be you. That was spoken by a mercy-motivated person right there. Okay, say that again. But let me just say this. I, I was sexually abused by a man that had a beard when I was a child. So when I started discerning, I had to separate out the fact that I got a reaction. I got triggered by men that had facial hair. Any man that has facial hair, don't worry. I've gotten over it, okay? I've gotten healed, all right? But you know what? If you're not careful, your own issues can become the filter that you view people and you can think you're discerning well actually what's happening is you're getting triggered and you need to get healed okay I don't have time to really preach on that but let me just say that's a warning to say we need to search our own hearts about people Um, there's a there's a little story that we like to tell in that regard and I'll tell you about the wolf but um there was, a, there was a little boy that thought that he would play a trick on his grandfather. 
And while his grandfather slept on the couch, he took a piece of Limburger cheese. You know that super stinky cheese? Have you, have you ever smelled Limburger cheese? It's a horrible, like, get it out of your house, okay? But it's super stinky cheese. And he took a little piece of it and stuck it right in his grandpa's mustache when he was sleeping. So when his grandpa woke up, his grandpa went, wow, this room really stinks. And he walked around the house. Whew, this whole house stinks. Oh, my gosh. So he steps out on the porch and he goes, wow, the whole world stinks. And so the analogy is this. When the whole world stinks, it's probably something under your own nose. If all you keep doing is discerning, oh, that leader's controlling. Oh, that person's control. We had a lady that came to our church. She said she was there three weeks. She was leaving. She was fed up with us after three weeks. The pastor's controlling. The worship leader's controlling. The life group leader's controlling. The nursery workers are controlling. This person, what was the issue? She wasn't in control. Something under her own nose. If all you do is discern lust, 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 lust. Oh, that person's lusting. That person's lusting. That person's, oh my gosh, the whole world's lusting. Can we check our own heart? Okay? So, whatever the issue is, okay? The first thing we've got to do is check our own heart. But sometimes you'll have a reaction for no reason, and usually there's a reason. And if it's not your own heart, then what is the reason? So, I had this, re this, this reaction to this guy that came in, sat on the back row, and was worshiping. Later on in the service, we did an activation. We put somebody in a chair. We said, anybody that has a word for this person, come on up here. We were learning to do activations, and he came up and got in line. I was holding the microphone. The closer he got, and he came, he gave a good word. Nothing wrong with the word he gave. So when we got done with service, we were driving home, and I'm crying. I said to Tom, I said, I'm just, I'm so critical. I'm so judgmental. I said, I just really need you to pray for me. And I told him my reaction to this man that was, in our, that was in our service that night. And he said, well, he said, honey, this is going to be a good growing experience for you because that man talked to me after the service and said he plans on start coming to our church. So I knew that I was going to have to start growing in love, walking in mercy, maturing in my character in Christ. Except that, after three weeks in our church, it was discovered he had seduced three young women and taken all their money. How many think I maybe should have just hit him that first night, okay? <laughs> See, he wasn't there for help. He wasn't there for any good purpose. He was a wolf. Okay, so we have to be able to discern. It says that there's, that there's uh, in, in everything there is, whiz, there is uh, discernment for judgment or for mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And nine times out of ten, we need to respond mercifully. But there are times that God says, that's a wolf, and there's no redemption there here. So my husband had to go and confront the man and basically say, I hope you get help, but it won't be here. <laughs> 